Hi, this is Jason with Forney Industries. Today we're going to discuss the Forney Easy Weld 20P. That is a 20 amp uh, plasma cutter. It is intended for uh, the typical do it yourselfer, uh, whether you're working on a farm or a ranch or an automobile restoration, maybe you need to fix your lawnmower deck or you need to fix your trailer. This machine is designed uh, for your do it yourselfer. Uh, what's really neat about this machine is it performs really well up to a quarter inch. When you think about a quarter inch of steel, um, very rarely do, does a typical DIYer need to cut more than a quarter inch of steel. And this machine will work fantastic from sheet metal up to a quarter inch of steel. Now if you want to cut aluminum, this machine can cut aluminum as well. However, you're not going to be able to cut a quarter inch thick you're probably really going to be able to cut about an eighth of an inch thick for aluminum. Okay, so when we talk about this machine, what do I need uh, for this machine to work well? Well, we need input power. When we talk about input power, we're talking basic household power. Okay, so if you look behind me, I have a 120 volt outlet here. That's really all I need to run this machine. Um, I can run it anywhere from 110 volts up to 120 volts. Um, give or take, then this machine will do just fine. Along with uh, the, the input voltage, I need um, a dedicated uh, outlet, okay? What, the, what I mean by a dedicated outlet is I don't want to have lights hooked up to my outlet or running off the same power. I need a full minimum 20 amps of, uh, 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 20 amps of input power. So you need a 20 amp circuit breaker minimum. However, occasionally you might trip a 20 amp circuit breaker. So we highly recommend you uh, explore getting a 25 or 30 amp dedicated uh, circuit breaker. Some of your electrical codes, uh, you need to consult with your local electrician, but a lot of your electrical codes will actually allow you to jump up to a 25 to 30 amp circuit breaker, and you can increase the wire gauge size and so forth but it has to be dedicated and it's only for welding and plasma cutting, okay? Along with that, um, we have 20 amps of output power on this machine. Um, the, we list the duty cycle at 35%. Uh, uh, however, that 35% is about, uh, when I use it at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, I don't know too many people that want to go plasma cutting when it's 110 degrees out. So normally when I use this machine, it's probably in a shop type environment. Let's say it's somewhere between 50 and 80 degrees. If you're somewhere between 50 and 80 degrees, odds are you're going to be able to cut somewhere between five to eight minutes uh, before uh, the temperature light will come on. And then you need to let it cool down for a couple minutes. And then you can go ahead and resume uh, cutting. So real world is significantly better than the rated uh, duty cycle on the plate. Okay. Along with input power, I also need a good air supply. What do I mean by a good air supply? I need to have a, a air compressor hooked up with an air hose. So I happen to have an air hose here. It's very easy to attach my air hose. Just simply a quick uh, connect fitting on the back of the machine here. Sorry here, put that machine on there. So I'll take my air hose, attach it to the back here. Very easy, okay. Inside of this machine, there is an internal regulator. And in that regulator, uh, there's also a cleaner and it helps remove moisture and it helps remove dirt and debris from it. But it is really important that you have a good quality air compressor. Uh, you cannot use an oil bath air compressor. Um, plasma cutters do not like oil and they do not like moisture, okay? Oil and moisture will absolutely destroy your plasma cutter and really frustrate you and, and destroy your plasma consumables. So make sure you have good, clean, dry air. I need a minimum one and a half CFM uh, air compressor um, that operates somewhere between 60 and 90 PSI, okay? Um, I prefer personally, if I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use probably a two and a half CFM compressor. But the good news is a lot of you already have a two and a half uh, CFM pancake compressor in your garage, uh, so that should work fine. Just make sure it's not an oil bath compressor. So with the 20P, we have air coming into it and now we're ready to plug it into the uh, wall outlet. So we're gonna grab the power cord. Uh, one of the things um, I get um, asked quite often is, can I use an extension cord uh, with this machine? Uh, my first response is, I prefer you not to. Uh, we don't recommend using extension cords. 
However, if you do need to use an extension cord, uh, I recommend one that's no longer than 25 feet, so shorter than 25 feet, okay? And it needs to be at least an eight, or uh, I'm sorry, a 12 gauge extension cord, okay? So 25 feet, 12 gauge, you can get by with it, but again, you're choking your input power to the machine and you might have some performance um, degradation. Uh, when you're using an extension cord, I also recommend uh, reducing your amperage uh, just a little bit so that you're not drawing so much uh, through your extension cord, okay? All right, so I'll take this uh, power cord, plug it into my 120 volt outlet back there. I'll go ahead and turn the machine on. I hear the fan kick on in the machine, so that's a good sign. I can take a look at here. I have a green um, LED here. It says my input power is good. And I don't have any lights here, so that's good. That means I'm ready to go. I have the proper air, uh, air pressure coming into it and everything like that. So that's how you uh, start it up and you check for your air lights. But I want to talk a little bit about the uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine off. So I want to spend a, a minute and talk about the uh, plasma torch consumables. This is a really important part of the torch and a lot of people don't understand the consumables very well. First of all, in this plasma torch, um, there is a, a plunger inside of here and uh, this, so there are some moving parts within this plasma uh, torch. So I recommend that you take very good care of your plasma torch. Don't be uh, dropping it on the ground or throwing it around and so forth. So, but let's take a look inside this uh, plasma torch head and let's look at the consumables. The first thing that I'm going to remove is the shield cup. Okay, It should just be hand tightened and pretty easy to remove. Take a couple turns. Okay, You'll notice um, on this shield cup there is a brass ring that goes around it. That brass ring needs to be nice and clean Okay, because uh, there is actually electricity that is conducted around that. Okay. So when I look at this here, you'll see these two plunge pins on the outside. There's actually a signal that goes through those plunge pins and this shield cup that tells me that my consumables are in place. So if, if those two plunge pins aren't pushed down uh, with uh, the shield cup in place, uh, there's no way for uh, you to get a plasma arc. So take care of your, your two pins here, take care of your shield cup. The next component that comes off is the plasma tip, okay? This happens to be a used tip. It's a fairly well used tip. However, it's in still in pretty good shape. When I look at a brand new tip like this one here, you'll notice that the hole is uh, small and it's uh, uh, in perfect condition. I look at this one here, I've got a little bit of uh, uh, you know, spatter or slag on that tip there, but the hole is still round, okay? It's very important that you have a round hole here, all right? and I don't see any um, major degradation. Uh, what you might notice though, is that the, with a well-used tip, the arc is not focused very well. So if you're having um, a hard time cutting through materials or that, that plasma arc isn't very focused, um, go ahead and put in a, a new tip and you'll get much better cutting results with a brand new tip, okay? There's a difference between a uh, used tip and a uh, new tip, all right? The, Next thing that needs to come off, all right, is the swirl ring. Um, you don't technically need to remove the swirl ring, uh, but you can. You need to be very careful that you don't lose it. This takes the air that is coming through the plasma machine and swirls it around the electrode. You'll actually notice on this specific electrode, there are swirl marks around the electrode. That is a good thing. That's what you want to see. You want to see nice, clean swirl marks around that electrode. That means the air, air is swirling around that electrode and you're going to get a nice, clean uh, plasma arc, okay? So take good care of your swirl ring, okay? The last piece that needs to come out is um, your electrode. Uh, a lot of times you'll find that this electrode has been loosened up um, after you've been using it and a loose electrode creates lots of problems. So what happens when you're creating a plasma cut is this torch head, and particularly the electrode gets super hot, and then it cools, hot, cold, hot, cold. And that hot, cold action actually causes this electrode to loosen up in here, and then you're gonna get a, a, a terrible arc performance. So make sure that your electrode is, uh, is nice and firm there. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my welding pliers uh, to un undo that, but there's other ways to do it. Okay, 
you'll actually notice on this electrode that there has been some heat uh, marks on it. You can tell that this electrode has been well used, but it's actually still in reasonably good condition. Okay, I don't feel any, any degradation there. If I look at the end of my electrode, the uh, hafnium that's inserted in there is still uh, in place. So I would go ahead and use this electrode for uh, a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and put everything back together again. I put my electrode in, I thread it in, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna take this. Now I'm gonna tighten it and, and just give it a little bit of a turn, not too much. You don't wanna really crank it because then you'll break off uh, your electrode inside your torch head, okay? If you do that, just give us a call, we'll help you out. Okay, so I have my electrode in there, nice and tight. Don't forget your swirl ring. I have a lot of customers that forget the swirl ring. This torch will not work without the swirl ring. Okay, I'll take my tip. I'm actually gonna take my tip that's used because it's in pretty good shape. I'll probably get another hour of cutting out of this tip here. Okay, put that in. Okay, then I'll take my cup, put that on. Okay. And then I'm just gonna hand tighten uh, this cup. Okay, and that's how you uh, take care of your torch. Um, if you ever have any problems with this torch, just give us a call, we're happy to uh, help you out with that. Okay. So now you know how to um, set up uh, for plasma cutting. Uh, there are a few little tips and tricks um, um, that I'd like to, to talk to you about. For one, you wanna make sure you have a good ground. You can attach your ground to the metal table uh, that you're working on, or you can uh, attach your ground uh, directly to the workpiece that you're gonna be cutting. Uh, whatever you attach the ground to, it needs to be free of paint. Uh, so no paint, no rust, no uh, dirt and coatings and so forth. Otherwise, you're just not, get a good, not going to get a good ground. Okay. So let's take a look at this torch and let's pretend that I'm going to cut this quarter inch piece of uh, metal, okay? Uh, you need to have a contact between the tip and what you're cutting. I can pull the trigger and get an arc for about two to three seconds. And if the machine does not sense an, a, a circuit between the tip and what I'm cutting, it will shut down, okay? So what that means is you need to drag this tip across the workpiece. So normally when you're plasma cutting, you're gonna start on the edge like this, okay? You're gonna pull the trigger. And once you have the trigger, then you're gonna pull the uh, torch across here. You're gonna to wanna to watch the spark trail going through whatever you're cutting. Watching that spark trail helps you guide how fast you're cutting, okay? So make sure you have your tip in contact with your workpiece. All right, all right. So in addition to the plasma cutter, there are a few other things that I like to, to have along with this. Uh, one is my, uh, my welding pliers. Another is a wire brush that helps clean off the, the material both before and after I cut. Uh, a slag hammer is really handy in removing the, uh, the cutting slag after I'm done, okay? Then I also like to have a helmet. Uh, you can reuse a regular helmet or I prefer an auto darkening helmet. One of the reasons I like an auto darkening helmet is some of your auto darkening helmets have a grind mode in them. And typically that grind mode is a shade three lens, which I find perfect with a 20 amp plasma cutter. Some people have more sensitive eyes, so you might want to try a shade three, four, or five. Uh, and some welding helmets actually have a uh, shade five selection. So that's one of the reasons I happen to like um, auto darkening helmets. Uh, but you can also use um, uh, glasses and so forth like that. Along with your helmet, uh, you're going to want to have uh, glasses uh, because it's very possible that sparks can uh, jump off and uh, get in your eyes. So make sure you have glasses along with your helmet. And then I usually uh, have a pair of leather gloves. Make sure that you have leather gloves, not some uh, type of uh, cotton that sparks can get through, or definitely not some of your flammable uh, style gloves. So a good uh, pair of leather gloves. So that uh, kind of uh, helps give you a little introduction to the uh, Forney EasyWell 20P. I uh, hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if you have more questions, you can always um, call into Forney. Uh, you can uh, ask to speak with an engineering uh, service technician. Our engineering service technicians work the phone lines as well as machine repairs. And uh, if you have any questions, we're happy to help you.